the alternative dig talk real issues real talk fellow citizens following the sequence of events uganda seems to be at political crossroads i'm not a servant of anybody As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 am in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel the alternative dig talk real issues real talk Yes, good morning to you, our viewers. We apologize for the technical glitches that occurred, but finally we are here. This is the Alternative Uganda, the Alternative DigTalk streaming live on the Alternative Uganda Facebook pages and DigTalk TV Facebook pages. We later on upload our shows on our YouTube channel. I am Katutu Musimi hosting this show, Tekachi Watlo. We will bring different people to discuss different laws to discuss different things that affect our day to day lives and today we are privileged and honored to have one of the great men Mr Eli who is a tax consultant but I will not introduce him but I will give him an opportunity to introduce himself and maybe he can talk much about himself you are most welcome on the show Mr Eli say hello to our viewers Um, the outsourcing. I'm an outsourcing manager. I work with Crow mm. AIA. Uh, Crow is basically uh, an accounting firm yes. and consulting. Uh, we rent a number of services that is tax and uh, audit. tax and outsourcing services and audit uh, tax and uh, outsourcing um, basically when you talk about tax mm. tax uh, we normally render services like tax compliance tax advisory uh, services to yes that's just a brief and um, <coughs> outsourcing uh, we have uh, a number of services there they, they are quite many we have bookkeeping okay uh, where we assist clients on how to keep proper books of account and uh, give them advice on on the how they can maintain them using various computerized accounting systems okay thank you so much yes. mr elian you're most welcome on this show and our viewers there if you have yeah. any issues if bobo ine chibuzo cho yagala okumanya aba bobo ine songa jo yagala bakunnyonnyoye kubikwatagana nebya emisoro taxes and our topic today will be about tax compliance and management mm -hmm. and then and, and from your introduction i see you have a, a great history and background you have been in the system for so long and you are understand well every single koko bine bya misoro ne ne bigenda mas but to begin with mr a uh if you were to maybe help somebody in for example identifying which taxes they are meant to pay what do you consider first uh okay 
because you need to first understand yes. the nature of business that uh, a client is in. Mm. So uh, after understanding the nature of business, mm. you are able to uh, advise him on the taxes that he supposed to um, to pay to 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 register for. Okay. Uh, actually, tax compliance uh, begins with. Uh, uh, begins with registration. That so, is very, very, very important. So, what do you register in this tax compliance? Okay. Uh, be, 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 before I come to to that, okay. Um, you 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 need to understand. The, is he is he in retail? Mm -hmm. Is he a manufacturing company? Mm. Is the business a, a, a startup? Those small small businesses. Mm. Okay, so once you've understood that you're able to prescribe the taxes, somebody should register for. And uh, all teens, mm. all okay, because uh, it's 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 when you register for a a, a teen yes. that they will I they will they will tag your teen to the 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 different taxes. Okay, for so, example, let us use uh, somebody who's operating a, a retail business. Okay, example, now yes. somebody operating a retail business, mm. the taxes that they will register him for it is uh, income tax. Income tax, and yes. uh, the income tax normally for small business they call it they, they are categorized under what they call presumptive taxpayers. Okay, yes, a presumptive taxpayer is somebody whose turnover does not exceed normally like 150 million. So they normally categorize them like from zero to ten million, then ten to twenty. So there is normally a tax mm. they, they they pay. It can be there is a percentage they use, mm. which they each category has a part. Yes, percentage. yes. So normally they say I think it is one point five percent of the turnover and and a, a, a fixed amount. So mm. whichever is lower, you you pay it, and that's. That's, uh, that's it for the whole year. Yes, yes. In, but uh, it's also important, mm. of course, to keep uh, books of account to justify the, the what <laughs> the tax yeah. that you you are paying to your. You, you yes. brought in a new term of uh, turnover. Yes. W what does that entail? Tur is it okay. you turnover. Do you get? Uh, turnover is uh, is actually sales revenue, mm. which in uh, our <laughs> Uganda they call <laughs> it. Uh, in 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 Yingiza, in Yingiza, that's the turnover. Yes, the turnover. Yes, and in our, I don't know, Runyachita, you can call it. Is it entire 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 business? Okay. Yes, yeah, that's uh, basically what they they base so that's on. That, that's that's for small on yes, for small for tax small taxpayers. Mm. They don't. Um, they don't uh, disturb them with this business of coming up with uh, financial statements. Okay. Uh, uh, audited books. Uh, audited books. So that's what you have to just keep a record of your what? Of your turnover, the, the turnover. sales. Okay. Yes. So, so now that's tax uh, compliance. Now when we talk about tax management, mm -hmm. what, are, what are we specifically dealing with? Okay. A tax management here basically. Mm. Um, you, you put in place systems in an organization okay. on how you you are going to to account for this tax. Yes. You get it. And uh, you you in a business you have what they call indirect taxes mm. and Indirect, indirect taxes. <coughs> now in indirect taxes here we are we talk we are talking about VAT okay. and uh, excise duty. Mm. Excise duty normally this applies to companies mm. that manufacture goods within the country. Okay. Yes. So and VAT. So basically, for you to account for VAT, you must charge it on your on your goods or services. Yes. And ensure that whenever you you procure also goods mm. and you you procure them from people who are registered for VAT. So mm. that you can be able to re to recover it. Okay. Yes. What I mean by recovering mm. is mm. that uh, when you are making a return, 
you deduct it from you from your the VAT you have charged on yourselves yes. and you remit the balance to mm. to the tax authority so now w uh, tax management basically you put in place a system mm. whereby um, the various taxes that you have that have been tagged to your business like yes. income tax income tax yeah pay as you earn um, uh, excise duty how you are going to account for, account them. for them yes yeah. now with the uh, when you are s when you are a small business you can um, you nowadays because now we have gone digital yes you yes. can have a small accounting system on your computer mm. or you can use your excel uh, to whenever you want to you 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 want to invoice invoice a, a client yes. you can use excel and the, the the beauty with now they have even introduced what they call um ura has uh, introduced what they call an e-free system okay electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing system mm. so you can either invoice on their platform or you invoice uh, on your system okay you you, you get it Yes, yes. So that's S what tax management is. Yes, about. yes. Uh, and uh, okay, not only that, mm. um, you ensure that you also, uh, when it comes to uh, payment of your employees, yes, you deduct the appropriate returns. monthly returns. Mm. Monthly, you deduct the the payers you earn because now that is also a what a responsibility mm. of the <laughs> of the right. firm. It's part of the the the, the measure they base on okay. to to see how compliant <laughs> the company is so if you don't remit nssf mm. uh, sorry sorry pay, pay and pay. even nssf nsf is also part right. normally you do it together so if you don't remit it on you don't deduct and remit it uh, as prescribed by the law mm. and within the 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 time Okay. you know you are supposed to remit it within a particular time okay. so then you are not considered to be compliant, compliant. yes uh, uh, and and when you talk about compliance yeah. and well, there is this other term called uh, we have actually these two terms and i wish that you could help our viewers out there to understand and maybe get the difference mm -hmm. uh, somebody says the are people who are tax compliant hmm? mm -hmm. and then there is uh, tax avoidance and then there is tax uh, evasion. Can, can you hear the pass? Okay. Break them so that okay. our viewers are there. Tax, uh, what evidence. I can say, tax uh, avoidance mm. is uh, is legitimate. It's uh, legitimate, uh, so it's not punishable. You, not, you, only, you take advantage of the the loopholes in the, in the, <laughs> in the tax system. laws and you, you, you pay less, uh, less tax. Uh, yes. Then the tax evasion is is not uh, legitimate. Okay. You get it. That's a difference I can give. But uh, uh, of course, in, in a, a business before you start, you you start saying that uh, okay, I want to pay tax. Mm. You must do what they what they call tax planning. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's why you find the big organizations. Uh, you'll find them. Uh, even when they are the, 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 the vehicles they procure, mm. they procure them for a purpose. Okay. You get it. They know here they will get capital allowances, here they will not get mm. capital allowances, things like that. So it's also it is very important before you when you are starting to do a tax planning exercise on the, the, the nature of the business you are going to engage in. Mm. So that you understand the the advantages you can get, the incentives, okay. yes, so that you can uh, make uh, decisions that are, that will help your business to thrive for a longer period of time. So it means you are working in your own favor. Yes, at some point. Yeah. Yes. So uh, when people evade taxes, mm. it's, it's illegal. Is it punishable in Uganda here under our laws? Or it stays in, in in the statutes that it's illegal to evade the taxes. Okay, you see, uh, 
some it, sometimes it is difficult for the for the what the enforcers the enforcers to to what to to punish to punish even to understand that somebody is not unless they <laughs> use the, the unless they use the what the the what the local authorities mm. uh, I, I think you can see in in uh, when you look at the urban urban centers mm. uh, URA has uh, partnered with uh, local authorities in trying to ensure that they collect taxes mm. when you see uh, when they are going to give you a license yes in in t town here you see Normally there is a tax authority. A tax you must yes, pay. yes. So it is uh, when you are operating a business. Mm. Now it is uh, difficult, really, to <laughs> <laughs> to say that you are going to evade. Maybe you can you can evade in some way, but uh, as they, they will have to look into your what mm. your your operations and see that you pay tax. Okay. Yes, before you get a license. Okay. So so. so if if I operate a business mm. uh, and I have hired you, for example, from Growy to come and help me, maybe see how much tax that I need to pay. Mm. Uh, for example, see which kind of taxes that I need to pay. What, what do you consider? Do you need a certain number of documents? Do you need receipts? Do you need this, uh, certificates and the rest? What what? Okay. Which documents do I require before you can maybe try to help me in any kind of... Okay, because uh, uh, compliance with the tax compliance, mm. as far as uh, uh, taxpayers are concerned, you begin with uh, registration. Yes. You need to have documents that your business is registered mm. before you can apply for a, a, a team. A team. Yes. Mm. So you have to register the business uh, in different formations. You could register as a sole proprietor. Yes. You register as a, as a, a partnership mm. that is for professional firms. They normally want them to register as partners. partnerships, law firms. Mm. <laughs> so do or you could register a company. Mm. So once you have those uh, documents, yes. uh, we also do that service. Mm. Uh, and uh, we have sec under secretarial services we, we do that service also mm. but, so, so uh, the, the taxes differ from which kind of business that you are operating or be, if it's a company it's different if it's yes. a sole proprietorship yes. it's different and if it's a partnership yes of course with the partnership the taxes on the partners yeah they tax the partners, partners yes. yes then with the company they tax the, the corporation tax yeah, the corporation yes. and its name yes yes then for a sole proprietor, depending on how you are operating, are you a startup? Mm. So uh, startup, they run around, they run around. Yes, you have said. They business, they are going to run a business. So that, mm. those are categorized as startups. Yes, the, the startups you come under, they are presumptive taxpayers. Mm. Yes. OK. Mm. Uh, so uh, I will ask, uh, I think I see a question here. And mm. somebody, no man asks. Who qualifies for tax exemptions? Uh, well, ec who, who exemptions? He brought it as a yes, yes, question yes. here. It's yes. in, in our comments. Well, ec 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 exemptions normally mm. they normally they normally go to uh, investors who are investing in a, an industry. Mm that uh, government wants to develop so that it can it can uh, have li uh, what they call like uh, backward and forward linkages okay uh, it can bring backward and forward linkages to, to to the what to the farmers you get it whereby they it's going to the industry somebody setting up an industry that is going to add value mm. to the to the products okay to the produce of the farmers you mm. get it mm. you know that that, that is a, a in, in other words that I, that investor is helping government to develop the grassroots people mm. 
it's where you can benefit the yes people are yes. so if somebody and is going to invest a substantial amount of capital mm. so, so they so give you limits of, of, of on how yes, much you, you can must invest yes you can negotiate you negotiate with uh, you, they normally negotiate with the the tax authorities yes yes and they will they will normally those exemptions are given on a case by case okay yes. so it's not mandatory that if you are to invest this yes. certain amount of money you must or you qualify to yes it depends exemptions. on the industry you are engaging in mm. just to give you competitiveness mm. you get it because okay. i've had uh, in the in the papers okay there are some some uh, industries that are starting up okay. they normally give them that, those incentives mm. and uh, no, normally you see such businesses they normally engage in the processing of what of, of agricultural products yes and you know the how risky agriculture is mm. so depending if some, on the weather conditions yes yes the, so you need to they need those exemptions okay to be able to uh, grow their business. Yes. Yeah. So, so I understand that these taxes are paid in, 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 in years. And you know, there are these confusing terms at some point that I would need you actually to advise our viewers so that they can get the knowledge. And okay. we have uh, what we call uh, the calendar year, tax, tax year, the normal tax year. Okay. Then we have uh, substituted tax years. We have there are so many, quite a number of them. Okay, maybe yes. so. Yes. You, so you can yes. just celebrate, and the viewers can okay. get to learn. Maybe normally who qualifies we, for which year? Okay, and normally when you 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 apply for registration as yes. a taxpayer, yes, uh, you will give details of your location of business, mm. box number, telephone numbers. Yes. You get it. You even define your accounting period. You are the one who determines you, yes, which time you, you want to account. Yes, yes. Depending on when when the company was incorporated. Yes. Yes. That that normally the determines for many companies mm. when it was incorporated, or they may want to adopt an accounting year if they have if they have a subsidiary here. Okay. You get it. Mm. If you are. A subsidiary, and you know your your company uh, that gives you financing. If the accounting period is January to December, that's what you will adopt. Okay. Or you can adopt July to June. Mm. So, but uh, most taxpayers are given the government accounting accounting year, mm. which is uh, July to June. Yes. So, July but uh, to July to June. Okay. So, now let us consider the accounting year July to June. Uh, you are supposed to file your final return six months from the your financial year from the year it has ended. You within it, six months. Within six months from your year end. Yeah. So that's if when you are you, yes, you are given yes six months to file your to file return. your final return. Mm. So it means if it is you should have filed your final return by thirty first December okay. this year. That is, uh, if I'm looking at uh, 30th June 30th 2022. Mm. Yes. So they have six months. Okay. So now, an, 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 another thing there is what they call provisional. Provisional, you have heard of that thing? Yeah, provisional, provisional income, income tax, tax return. return. Yes. Now, uh, basically, with a provisional tax return, mm. uh, if you have operated for maybe some for a, a significant period of time mm. you know you 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 know your your taxable income that we expect to make in a year okay so uh, if let, let me say you expect to make like a uh, hundred million as taxable it's income taxable income yes you're a company it in a year mm. so you you file you file and pay uh, that is thirty percent of hundred million. Yes. That is, uh, that is how much. That is thirty. <laughs> so, in uh, you you pay fifteen million, fifty percent. Okay. Yes. 
So you just so it, you you pay it. It's like a, an advance or a deposit. A deposit. Yes. You get it. Okay. And the final annual return. Yes. And that you are supposed to pay, but yes. you first pay a deposit. A deposit. Yes. That's in the provision. In the provision. Mm. Yes. So now, of course, uh, when at the the end of the financial year, yes. when you you are compiling your your accounts, yes. um, if if you assess yourself and you see that you have maybe you have to make um, a tax of mm. let me say let me say twenty million, yes. and you have already paid fifteen, mm. so instead of paying twenty, you first deduct the fifteen that you made as a provisional tax, okay. and you pay only five. So. Mm -hmm. Because I, I assume that this is a presumption that you are going to make this amount of money. Yes. And what if maybe circumstances happen and you don't raise the expected amount and maybe have paid the provisional uh, return mm -hmm. of much more money than you would have paid after compiling your final and your returns. Is that money given back to you? No, no, no. Oh, it is uh, taken uh, forever. Oh, the, no, it will, okay. it will remain, you report it. Okay. You report it. Mm -hmm. Let me say you have not made taxable profits that can that you can tax at fifteen million. Yes. Let me say you have made taxable profits. Even you, when you maybe have made a, maybe you have made a loss. Yes. Yes. You it will remain as a what? As a tax deposit in your balance sheet. Okay. So whenever you have a liability, that's what you <laughs> run to first. Yes. Taken over. Yes. So you first utilize that. To you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've, I've, there have been instances where where uh, people have withholding tax deposits, mm. but uh, uh, you are have not seen them <laughs> refund. Maybe it, it applies only on VAT. Okay. Yes. So if you pay much VAT, it can yes. Be Maybe what you can only apply they normally if they see that you have been paying so much withholding tax. Mm. And the tax you you the the, the return you are filing mm. uh, justifies that justifies your actual financial position the way you are performing. Mm. Oh, it's not it is not misleading. It's not misleading to the to to the to the tax assessors. Okay, you get it. They will do what <coughs> they can give. They can you can. They can give you what they call withholding tax exemption. I think okay. you have heard of that. Yeah, no, you can explain to yes. our viewers what it is. Okay, entails. normally, uh, s sometimes some people apply for withholding tax exemption, tax depending on how compliant the tax authorities. So that one depends on you, on how compliant you are. Yes, yes. Mm. When you 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 apply for it, okay, then they will assess and see how compliant you have been. And they give you. So when you talk about when you apply, how do you apply and where do you apply to? For that you of way? course you begin from your tax jurisdiction. Okay. Yes. If you are in uh, Nakawa, <coughs> you mm. go to uh, the head office. Okay. If you are in uh, in what? For example, in Kampala. Yeah, Makindye and Makindye, I you got, I think Mark, does it have. Uh, because uh, I think they used to have some uh, divisional offices. Mm. Now it is all at one headquarter now. Okay, so that's yes. where you start from. Yes. You make an application. You make an application, yes. Mm. Then they will assess and be able to, if they if they fail to give it to you, they will give you a reason. Okay. Yes. Mm. They will give you a so reason. Or if, if your application is missing some, uh, content, mm. or you have not, um, you have not, uh, there is some information you have concealed from them, mm. they will ask you to first provide. Okay. Yes. So, um, I understand that in this system and uh, in the field that you operate in, for example, we shall tackle taxation today, and we, mm. there is what we call audited books of accounts that you have to provide at the end of the financial year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe for purposes of computing your taxable income and and maybe your liability, your liability at the end of it all. Is 
or are these books, audited books of account done by specific people or any person can come and maybe make their calculations and get their book and turn it off? No, no, no. For purposes of tax. Oh, okay. Now you see, there are, there are businesses where they require yes. audited mm. uh, books and they, normally they, when you look at the, the TPC, they say normally if your turnover is above 500 million, mm. you, there is a requirement. You must have okay. audited books. Yes, you are required to have audited books. But of course, um, having audited books is very important because um, you, it, you are able to understand mm. how how you are, you 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 are how you are performing as a business. As a business, yes. yes. And uh, maybe if there are certain transactions that are not very clear, or they have been accounted for in a different or improper way, mm. the auditor will be able to to point out such. Okay. Yes. So that's why an audit is very very important, most especially if you are uh, an established are. company. Mm. Yes, it's important to back up. Your, your what your final return with an audit okay yes okay so as 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 uh, people who have skills and maybe you have operated in this business do you also help people to maybe uh see how they can deal away with these heavy taxes that are levied on them for example do you give them advices on how they can reduce the levels of taxes they're supposed to pay I am saying about tax avoidance and the rest. Do you give such expertise and knowledge to companies and maybe individuals who operate businesses and how best they can avoid this? Yeah, we, we, we do, but uh, uh, basically what we normally advise them is to be uh, very open with their transactions. Yes. Because you'll find somebody uh, somebody may be, let me say you who you you have purchased you've purchased a vehicle mm. you have not you have not actually purchased it maybe you have you are hiring it okay you 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 are hiring it to to okay to for your operations maybe you are a distribution company mm. so and you 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 are paying out money to to maintain it service it so the fact that uh, the fact that you are using it mm. it is important to have it on your on your books of account okay yes and when it is on your books of account you are entitled to capital allowances okay. for it mm. you get it all those so now when you conceal those transactions from us it's also very hard for us. So we, <laughs> we, we, we advise clients to be very open with their businesses okay. so, so that we can be able to do what? So, so, when, you say that, them so when you say that, does it mean that there is uh, actually, are there specific, maybe money is got from different uh, dealings that are, you know, applicable for taxation and are there those that are not taxable? Is that what you're trying to Yes. Say now, now you see you see now when you conceal some transactions, yeah. it is hard for us to advise you mm. on um, which is taxable uh, and maybe which is not taxable. Yes, yes. And uh, and how to to ensure that you, you pay tax mm. that is is within the what that is uh, proportionate to how your how your business is performing. Okay. Because otherwise, if you, you normally businesses have a challenge that uh, even when even when they have not filed returns, mm. you'll find you are a, giving them like assessments. Okay. And uh, you, to count an assessment, you must justify. Otherwise, why do you think? <laughs> why do you think that assessment we have given you so? So you justify it with. Proper books, proper books so of account, yes, which you can even uh, justify before them. Tell them that this is this is a cost, this is a revenue, mm. this is my asset. You get and it. Maybe this is a liability. And this is a liability that I have. Mm. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, our viewers, for always following. And I go through your comments uh, here briefly. Uh, Norman Tumhimbi says, asks a question. Is there a difference between tax holiday and tax exemption? Mm. We we'll start with that because the question continues. And okay. <laughs> when you look at uh, a, a, a tax holiday, basically, mm. you are given like uh, you are given like it is a tax holiday. The 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 the, the time you you have the holiday for is defined. It is defined. It is they defined. say you have a holiday for maybe yes, two yes. months. Yes, or? but normally it is they give it is years. Yeah, they years. give in years. In That's years. a holiday. Yes. Now with the tax exemption, normally like the when you look talk about withholding tax, it's mm -hmm. normally like for six months. Okay. Then they gain. They review you. They review, they review your, assess, your, okay. your extent of compliance. Okay. Yes. Either they can. Uh, continue giving you the exemption status or they, or they can withdraw, withdraw it. it yes then he goes ahead and asks what are the advantages and disadvantages of a team actually most of our viewers may not be knowing what this team means you can also explain it team t i n a team a team basically it is like your it's like an account number that you have on the on the you are a portal. Yes. Yes. You it's identifies you as a taxpayer. Okay. Yes. So uh, if you want to do anything to do with tax filing mm. um and you want to edit your registration details, yes. you want to make tax payments, you do that through your team. Through your team. So yes. when I don't have a team, that means that uh, it's I, very difficult for very you. It's very hard for me to pay any tax. Yes. And is that not hitting the government of its taxes, or it's acceptable? Okay. Well, <laughs> of course you can uh, you can use somebody, but it's important. Of course, you identify <laughs> yourself. Okay. Yes, yes. Because uh, uh, just recently, they have they have even been saying. I think they made a, a change in the tax law whereby even when you are trans, transferring now land, mm. you must have you now must have 18. 18. Mm. Just as if you want to acquire a vehicle, you must have 18. Mm. Yes. So what are some of the advantages of having this thing? Mm, basically 18. 18 basically. To When you have it, yeah. it is... A, it is a justification that you are a, com a compliant <laughs> taxpayer because somebody who doesn't want to. Uh, so that one uh, identifies uh, you as a compliant taxpayer. Uh, no, 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 no. As somebody who is trying to be compliant. compliant yes, yes. <laughs> you get it. Okay. But of course, uh, normally in Uganda here, uh, people normally have teens mm. uh, for specific purposes. When it, uh, once it. Uh, the, 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 if he has acquired the car, yeah, that's, that's that's he, the he'll be compelled to have the, the, the tin. Okay. But uh, of course, uh, when you have the tin, it is important to ensure that your uh, your what your uh, your obligations you are satisfying them mm. as per the what. And how about the disadvantages of having this tin? Mm. Well. Disad what disadvantage <laughs> can I give you? Uh, well, what I've told you is that it helps you to do what? To identify yourself as mm. a, a taxpayer, taxpayer who's trying to be compliant. Yeah. You get it. So, even when you are trans transferring, because mm. if, if you want to transfer your land, if you want to maybe sell your sell vehicle, Yes, you need to have your tin. Mm. You need to have your tin, your your the your tin and the tin of the what the, the buyer. The buyer. Yes. So both of you must have the tin number yes. to to, mm. to make the to transaction, transaction successful. Mm. He goes ahead and says, "I got that thing called a tin. When I wanted to transfer my car ownership, mm. apparently here I sent me funny email that I should file returns when I have no business or company." <laughs> How can you hear this, this view out there? Okay, normally, 
okay there is a, another thing people don't know that mm. if uh, having a teen it's not that uh, even when you are not operating that you have to pay tax okay yes if uh, if maybe if let, let me say you have uh, moved away you have gone to outside countries to do like what they call HAU. Okay, uh -huh. so you inform you are and tell them i am moving out of yes the yes they will deactivate your team in when you come back and you want to do you reactivate the team there is that there is that function function also on their what in their systems okay so uh, there is this other one called uh, Bitenji Karicho mm -hmm. and uh, the question is, can one disqualify themselves and their teen as and when they run bankrupt? It's a question here. Well, uh, bank, <laughs> a bank, a bankrupt, say normally, that one is normally determined, I think, by the what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the courts. By courts, yes, yes. yes. So, so it's I think, not you cannot determine. I think here it's when the courts determine and say that Kato is now bankrupt from today onwards. Mm -hmm. So can I uh, disqualify myself from this thing? No, no. Activation, activation, deactivation of a team, that one is the responsibility of URA. Mm. So. She uh, actually, he or she adds and said, especially in mm -hmm. the sense of a company, if a company runs bankrupt, mm -hmm. is, it, is this thing still relevant to the company? Uh, of course. Um, it will still be relevant because they may, maybe there could be a return they want to file. Okay. You get it. There could be a return that uh, the company has got to file. Mm. So it depends on how you... on how the, the tax authorities look at it yes you get it you have to present your issues why you want to close uh, the the team mm. and the business okay. then they will look into that and act appropriately mm. because I, I, uh, anyway from from my experience when most of these companies run bankrupt and maybe uh, they are sole proprietorship hmm? They are owned by a single person and they run bankrupt. Then this person deserts and maybe forgoes the company. And ah. is that team still relevant in the case of that company? No, because that's the what I that, no more that's what I was saying. You as far as the system is concerned, yes. they will continue sending you assessments. <laughs> yes. Assessments. So Even when that's I am, why I was telling you that when you see that you are not able to continue the business, yeah. you, you get it. You are not operating. Mm. It's important to ask them to deactivate. How, how do we notify them? Do we do there's a, a form you fill? There's a, there's a form you normally fill. Mm. There's, it's on normal on the portal. Okay. Yes. So you fill that form indicating the reasons? Or it's yes, you indicate the reasons. Mm. Yes. So is it mandatory that when I fill that form and maybe send it, is it mandatory that they will actually, uh, uh, what, what should I say? Will they actually deactivate my teen or? Of course, they... they, they there they, are a number they, of things they consider. Yes, they, they look at the issues you have presented mm. and see whether they... Are they realistic? That, mm. hey, what you... The, the reasons you are giving are... Is, is, is it actually what you, 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 you actually trying to present to them? That you will no longer have business or you are trying to conceal something? Mm. from them okay so they they take their time and look at what because they normally they will look at the system they will look at the system there now if you are a VAT taxpayer okay they will if you are nephris they will look at the 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 invoices that come into your system and mm. see mm. you get it, to ensure that uh, actually the, your business is what not operating Okay. You get it. Then they will base on that and decide whether they will deactivate. But the most important thing is informing them. If you have done you that, you if you have done that and backed up backed up the 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 deactivation with a, a letter, mm. yeah, that okay. one is proof. Because they they should not raise assessments, unnecessary assessments, because they will 
which, whichever team you apply for and is registered, mm. for them they presume that you are doing business. Okay. Yes. So that's when they will keep on giving you yes, assessments if you don't put in an, a return. So, so that's an advice to our viewer out there yes, who has yes. a team and maybe they are not operating any yes. business at the time. Yes. To notify you are the that they are not operating any business and yes. their team should be deactivated. An exception to that is only what employees. Employees is not employees. Your team must be active all the time. It is you are not an obligation to file an individual. File. Yes, because you normally they pay it for you. They deduct it for <laughs> they you. They deduct it from your employee. Yeah. Yes. Okay. under the pay. Mm. Yes. Okay. We have had the challenge in Uganda as a whole and in our, in our laws, for mm. example, the Taxation Act, which is almost amended every year. Uh, as Crowe, as, as Eddie, mm. the tax consultant and, 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 and an expert in that field, when you uh, access maybe a company or access an individual who needs advice about tax, do you also inform them about these new amendments and changes that keep on happening? Do you keep on updating your clients so that they can be up to date, or you are always just to advise them on what to do and what not to no, do? No, actually we Leave do the that. issues of the road to <laughs> themselves. We, we actually do that yes. where, because normally those changes normally come in towards the, uh, um, the, the, the end of the, the year. Financial yeah, the yes. financial year. So they normally come actually with the budget. Okay. You get it. Mm. So, and Parliament will approve those amendments once they are, they are what mm. they are read. Okay. So we normally inform them, mm. and uh, normally there are changes like to the VAT mm. Act, okay. excise duty. They will maybe uh, reduce a rate of excise duty, okay. or they remove. Um, in the VAT Act, they can uh, remove the exempt exemption status of a particular uh, good or service, mm. then it, so that it becomes now taxable. Okay. So those are some of the changes they normally make. Yeah, and uh, basically that is to normally mobilize more revenue for the what <laughs> <laughs> the okay. government. Okay, uh, uh, and maybe if I should ask this as well. <coughs> as somebody who has been in the field, we have had so many terms used, for example, by tax experts and uh, these revenue people, mm. thresholds. Eh? If, 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 if maybe you are, you are income falls under this threshold, then you must pay this. And these are terms that most of us may not understand at the time. Okay, the the th the pay threshold yes. uh, that I can w where they normally apply it mm. on um, taxation of individuals. Individual, so yes. normally uh, that one brings in the income tax of individuals. The threshold is two hundred thirty-five. Okay. So somebody earning two thirty-five under. So if you are to break that so threshold, what exactly do they be meaning? Okay, basically I'm trying to tell you that somebody earning 235,000 below, okay. they don't want to don't deduct, want to any, deduct tax. any tax. Yes. Mm. Yes. So Should that's the threshold they are meaning. Yes. They mean it used to be, it used to be 130,000, but of course, you know, <laughs> many things have changed since that time. Okay. Mm. Uh, and maybe I, I should talk about uh, the principles that are followed in taxation. And I will give this, and I would want uh, you to give us a personal view and somebody who has been in this field. When they talk about the canons of taxation, hmm? flexibility, mm. uh, among, uh, among the rest, are they considered in our tax systems here in Uganda, as somebody who has been in this field? Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, Efficiency, the, the canons of taxation. Yes. I think, I think to a large extent, URA has, has been able to, you know, to adopt, to adopt them. Because mm. I can give you, um, at the time I started doing tax compliance, mm. uh, tax compliance was very, very hectic. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, before 2009, mm. for you to to ensure that you are complying, you had to to report every month 
at the, <laughs> at the office running with the, with the book, a, 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 a pay return book, VAT, mm. you get it. You try to, to go and get a stamp for URA. That but was now, on a monthly basis. Monthly basis. Mm. You get it. And when you don't do that, they will consider you to be a, a person who has a, there will be a penalty for that. Mm. Yes. So, but now you s just sit anywhere. You, you can even, <laughs> see, even when you are outside the country, mm. you can file a return if you have your information. Okay. Yes. So that's a new change that has been brought up. Yes, by, yes. By, by URA. Yes. Okay, and they have even gone ahead now. They, they are computerizing for people, um, invoicing and receipting. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our viewers, thank you for watching and following us. Uh, the Alternative Digitalk streaming live on the Alternative Uganda, and we are hosting Mr. Eli, who is a tax consultant here. And he's trying to educate us and informing us about different things that maybe, in one way or the other, we did not know or we knew little about how this tax uh, system is run in this country. And he's keeping to inform us about the same. And <clears throat> I am happy that a number of questions have come in and people who are watching, thank you for always watching and following. This is Tekachi that airs every Tuesday from 11 to midday. Uh, and and maybe uh, to ask and say, uh, as an initiative of growing, yes. where, where, you, where you, you come from. Yes. Uh, do you have specific amounts that you charge? Maybe if somebody wants to be advised about tax issues, do you do pro bonos? Do you give free advice and the rest? Uh, uh, basically, mm. we 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 hand the client the way it comes. Yes. Yes. We 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 educate. Uh, sorry, we educate the, the client first mm. about, because that is the need, need to know first, you okay. get it. We give them knowledge mm. um, about the tax and the, the potential tax that they expect to be registered for. Okay. At your, for any, maybe if you want to engage in manufacturing, mm. if you are a startup. You get it. So we are able to advise them first mm. before we can uh, think about the charging. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and we, we received another question here. Mm. And Vitenji uh, asks, what does he have to say about our tax system and the current economic status? Do you think as our money has lost values, the threshold that he mentioned should equally change. Now, of course, now you see uh, it, <laughs> normally when you have when you are importing mm. uh, when you are when you are importing um, like uh, those those items, they they normally have those uh, the import duties yes. that they charge. Mm. depending on the different items you are importing. Now, those, uh, those taxes are normally decided by the, a, a code. Okay. A, the, there is a code they normally apply mm. that uh, details all those items that you, impo that you expect to import within the co COMESA. Mm. Uh, I think I've had a, a Many traders trying to negotiate with the, with government on uh, some items they want to measure. They want to charge tax basing on the on the what on the weight mm. of certain what commodities. Yes. So uh, basically, some some tax normally you it it you have to justify why you think. <laughs> 
so, why you think otherwise so, they so, shouldn't charge so we did we should not consider anything about the economic crisis that we are facing as a country maybe uh, if we have inflation at a time these taxes must be constant that's i think what they are trying to mean the threshold should be constant mm. regardless of the situation that we are facing of course um w with the <laughs> What you can only do, yes. what you can only do as a trader, uh. is also to to do what, to, you know, to raise your prices, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, but you see an, an, another thing: what you you traders are doing is engaging with what with the government, because mm. uh, I had at least they were able to listen to them and withdraw some what, some taxes, some taxes. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Eli, and uh, our viewers out there for the questions. I think you have been answered. Mm -hmm. And if you have any other questions, you can keep the engagements going on and we shall respond accordingly and uh, timely. Uh, and we are, time is not our friend and we are about to close our show. And I will give you two minutes to uh, give your final advice to our viewers. Uh, maybe brief them on what they need to do if they want more information about you as an individual, as, a, as an expert and a consultant, and yes. maybe as, as the initiative itself. Okay. Uh, well, what I would like to say is that uh, uh, tax, tax compliance mm. has been made very, very simple for them. Um, you don't need, you no longer need to, to queue to queue at uh, URA offices uh, to get tax uh, to okay to file returns. Mm. So uh, when you f when you want to start up a business, it okay. is important you uh, register your business first and get the 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 registration documents that are required. Let it be uh, a small business. Okay. A sole, a sole, 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 sole proprietorship partnership and company. So mm. once you have those <coughs> essential documents, you can begin with uh, registration. Registration for, you apply for a team. Okay. You get it. And uh, was in, now the people we have are uh, in the digital era. That one is not, uh, <laughs> they are used now to smartphones. You can do that even on your smartphone, Re applying for a team. Okay. You get it. So and uh, having a team does not mean you, you are supposed to file tax where, when your business is not making money. Mm. You get it. Okay. Should file tax when only when your business the business is making yes, you get it. So that is one thing that I'm stressing, and that should be very very important. Mm. Then um, an, an, another thing is that um, it's, it's also um, important to be okay have knowledge of what of uh, developments in 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 tax okay yes because uh, before before you say i want to uh, purchase a certain item mm. from uh, uh, abroad mm. it's important to understand the duties the okay. customs duties okay that are that you 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 are likely to pay mm. so it's important to have that in mind always when you are going to import. Yes. Okay. Because uh, many changes have happened. I think with the with customs, beginning with the the year in which we were in a lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, many taxes were raised, most especially those we import. There has been a change in the import duties, so it's important to know the taxes that you'll pay. Otherwise, you may purchase an item that you are not going to, you leave it to the authorities <laughs> okay. to, uh, to sell it just to recover the cost. Mm. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Edi, uh, for your time and sharing with our viewers out there. All people who have been watching and following, commenting and sharing, we can't thank you enough and we can't take it anymore, but we wish you a wonderful day and we catch up next week, Tuesday, for the same show, but our programming continues normally. And I should say thank you so much. I'm Kato hosting this show. See you some other time and have a lovely afternoon. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.